All right, standard enthalpies of formation. Um, with standard enthalpies of formation, we're going to call this like Hess's law. Whoopsie. I'm going to call this Hess's law part two. Okay. Now, with as far as Hess's law part two goes, or standard enthalpies of formation, what happens is I have some reactions that occur too slow or too fast to really to really study their delta H. So instead of trying to study them in a laboratory by adding chemicals and seeing what happens or blowing things up and see how much energy comes in or out, um, what we're going to do is calculate them using the standard enthalpy of formation. Okay. Now, this sub these substances, the standard enth enthalpy of formation comes from countless times where, where scientists have done these enthalpies of reactions, and they've recorded them on the big list. If you want to mark this list on your book, it's on page, it starts on A19. It's all the way in the back of the book and has like a purple border or a purple edge to the pages. So it's Appendix A, starts on page 19, 20, 21, 22, I believe. Now, standard enthalpy of formation with this symbol is the change in enthalpy that accompanies the formation of, and here's an important part, one mole of a compound from its elements, so they've got to make it from its elements, with substances in their, finally, their standard states, okay? Standard state is, of course, the delta H formation of their standard state, okay? So I can only create one mole of a substance. It's going to come from its elements, and those elements better be in their standard states. Now, how does this work? We will work with it like this. Okay. Uh, I guess we should probably define what standard state is first. You can read what's on this page, but what you really should know about standard states of formation is it's how something is, how a substance is, whether it's a compound or an element. It's how it is as it's sitting in front of you, whether you're at home or at school or whatever. So carbon looks like a black powder. Sulfur is a yellow solid. Um, sodium is a metal. Car I already did carbon. Copper is an orange metal. Water is a little bit different because it could be a gas or it could be a liquid. So you, and it can exist under standards. It can exist in both conditions and its standard state. So you got to watch that. Okay. So that's the important thing. How does it exist as it's sitting in front of you? Okay, so we should probably write standard enthalpies of formation equations. The way this works is that I'm going to create, again, one mole of NO2. So in order to create NO2, I need to have nitrogen. And nitrogen is diatomic, so it's going to be a 2. And I'm going to have oxygen, which is also diatomic. Their standard states dictates that they're gases. NO2 is a gas. Okay, now to balance this, again, i got to stick with my one mole here. But I have two moles of nitrogen here, so what I need to do is multiply that by a half. So a half times two gives me just one here. This gives me two, and I have one, and I have two. So that's balanced. CO2 is a little bit easier. You have carbon plus oxygen yields CO2. So here is one mole of a substance in its standard state. Carbon solid, oxygen's a gas, CO2 we know is a colorless, odorless gas. Now. And again, you're going to look these up in the back of the book to find their standard enthalpies of formation. Or you can possibly use page 247. It's got a small list of these things. Like, for example, NO2, to create this, the delta H of formation is going to be 34 kilojoules. That's actually kilojoules per mole. Uh, for carbon dioxide, is it listed? Yes, it is. And it's negative 394 kilojoules per mole. Okay, water, again, let's say it's liquid water, it could be H2 plus O2 yields H2O. I have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, so that matches. Again, two hydrogens and two hydrogens. But here I have two oxygens and I have one oxygen. I have to stay with one mole of a substance according to the definition, so I better multiply by a half in order to make that work. Okay, so that's writing standard enthalpies of formation equations. Now, the last thing is, is finally getting to the math behind this. Again, Hess's Law Part 2 says that we want to calculate the amount of energy it takes in any reaction. In order to do that, I need to know the standard enthalpies of formation. So I'll use the table 6.2 on page 247, or I'll go to the back of the book on page 821. Um, and the way this works, for me to describe it is a little impractical. So the delta heat of formation for any reaction stands for the sum of, which means I'm adding things together, the sum of, that's what this means, the heat of formation of the products. Notice it's the products first, and I need to multiply them by their moles. 
and I'm going to subtract that from, again, the sum of the reactants and, again, their standard heats of formation, okay, and their moles. So, again, this is pretty weird in how this works for me to describe it, so I'd just like to show it to you. By the way, elements are never included. Their standard heat of formation is always zero because you can't form an element. They form naturally by themselves, so you cannot make elements, okay? All right, so in order to do this, let's get a blank page here. And let's try one. I'm going to be doing the sample problem on page 249 where it says, this is sample exercise 6.9. It says, using the standard enthalpy formation listed on table 6.2, calculate the standard enthalpy change for the overall reaction that occurs when ammonia is burned in air to form nitrogen dioxide and water. This is the first step in the manufacture of nitric acid. So I have an equation. Let's write that equation down. It is 4NH3 plus 7O2. 4 NH3 gas plus 7 O2 gas yields 4 NO2 and 6 H2O. 4 NO2 plus 6 H2O. Okay, and this is both gas and I believe the water is liquid water. Okay, so here we go. We got our standard enthalpy. We, I'm sorry, we have our reaction. And what I want to do is find out how much energy it takes to make this reaction tick. And the way that I'm going to do that is use these energies. So what it, what it is, is so the standard enthalpy for the reaction um, is equal to, now watch how this works. All right, I'm going to take my products first. So I'm going to take my products first. And what I'm going to do is take 4, there's a 4, times the standard enthalpy of formation of NO2. The standard enthalpy of formation of NO2 is 34 kilojoules. So 34 kilojoules. Okay, now it's the sum of, so I'm going to add that to 6. There's a 6 here. Liquid waters. Liquid water on page 247 is negative 286 kilojoules. Okay, so let me box that in. And I'm going to subtract that from now the reactants 4 so I have 4 NH3s and NH3 gas has a molar heat of formation of negative 46 kilojoules negative 46 kilojoules okay now this is an this is an elemental so I, this is going to be zero so I'm going to add that to zero kilojoules so I literally don't have to include that okay so there's my setup. So all the coefficients are there available. I'm multiplying everything by what it should be. And so what I'm going to do is take 4 times 34. 4 times 34 kilojoules gives me 136 kilojoules plus a negative 6 times 286. That's negative 286. Gives me negative 1716 minus 4 times negative 46 which gives me negative 184 okay so just changing all the signs I end up with 136 kilojoules oops minus 1716 kilojoules plus 184 gives me my standard enthalpy of formation for this reaction. Excuse me, standard enthalpy of the reaction. So I have 136 plus 1716. Nuts. Let me try that again. 136 minus 1716 plus 184 gives me an answer of negative 1396, which is the correct answer. All these problems work exactly the same way. Um, sometimes you're given the total enthalpy of the reaction. you got to solve for something else. I suppose we can try one more. Um, let's turn in our books to page uh, 251, and we'll try this one on uh, sample exercise 6.10. Let me clear out the screen first. Okay. So here we go. Let's try this. It says using enthalpies of formation, calculate the standard enthalpy change 
in a standard change in enthalpy for the thermite reaction, which is listed as, and I'll write that on the board, this reaction occurs when a mixture of powdered aluminum and an iron 3 oxide is ignited with a magnesium fuse. Okay, so I have 2Al and Fe2O3. 2Al plus Fe2O3 yields Al2O3. plus 2Fe. These are all solid. Okay, so again what I'm going to do is look up these things in the back of the book and you're going to see that this is actually a little bit easier than uh, than what it appears. Okay, um, all right, still using our standard enthalpies of formation in our appendix. We have Al2O3, so, so the delta heat of the reaction is equal to Al2O3, I only have one of those, so I'm going to be 1 times Al2O3. The standard enthalpy of formation is negative 1676, negative 1676 kilojoules, um, plus 0. 2, and this is an elemental, so it's 0. 2 times 0 is just 0, okay? Minus, okay, so I did the products first. Now I'm going to minus and I'm going to subtract the reactants. So therefore, I have 2Al. That's 0 again. So 2 times 0 is just 0. And then now I need Fe2O3. So I only have one of those. So Fe2O3 is negative 826 kilojoules. And I can add these things up. So I have negative 1676 plus 826 because I'm going to change the sign. So 16, negative 1676 plus 826 gives me an answer of negative 850. And that's finding out the standard enthalpies of formation of the reaction. Okay, if you have any questions, you guys can email me, st underscore kinkoff at, at smfcsd.org. Good luck.